She is part of the absolutely incredible Kansas State women's basketball program. I mean, at one point, this team was number two in the country. And that's, that is, I, I'm still having a hard time wrapping my brain, brain around it. Not because they're not good, but just because the idea of number two in the country, Kansas State women's basketball, is just not something I ever thought we would see. Very excited to have Gabby Ga- Gregory joining us today. Gabby, welcome to the 1012. Hello, thanks for having me. Absolutely. We appreciate you taking some time out to talk with us today. So I, mean, I want to start right there. You guys reached number two in the country. That is awesome. That is absolutely incredible. That's not a shot at, at you guys whatsoever. I think it's a feat that deserves to be praised and accomplished. I know we're not at number two right now. That's okay. But being that highly ranked, having the season start the way they did, like I know you guys' goal is for that. Did you expect to have something like that happen this season? Um, honestly, we didn't really talk too much, um, like before the season stuff of like expectations, coach Mitty kind of just didn't really want to even like talk that far in advance. We kind of just put our focus more on like taking every day at a time and focusing on like what we need to get better at each day. Um, and so we still kind of have that mindset of like next game, um, even like our game coming up this weekend, like coach Mitty said, we're playing UCF and uh, Coach May said this is the biggest game of the season um, to us. And so it's kind of like that same thing of like maybe to other people that doesn't seem like the biggest game of the year would be on Saturday against maybe a team lower in the in the rankings of the Big 12. But that's kind of like his viewpoint on it. Um, so, I mean, obviously it was really cool to be number two. Um we did face like a lot of adversity after we did get to number two. So it's been, uh, you know, kind of, kind of a tougher stretch since then, but I mean, it's still something cool that we can celebrate and we can um, look back at it, but obviously we would like to get back up there. (laughs) Look, I, I know it's like every game is, is the most important game. I know it's a bit of coach speak. It always feels that way, especially early in the season, as we get Mm. to the closing stretch here in, in the season, I mean, the race for the regular season crown, the race for seeding both in the Big 12 tournament, the race for seeding for the, the NCAA tournament. Like every game is a big game. I think that absolutely applies. I mean, how do you, how focused do you feel like the team is both just on game by game? Or is there some view of like, we have these other goals we want to achieve? Um, I think obviously it's like in the back of your head, like thinking of um, even just, regular season, big 12 seating, things like that. Um, Obviously we want to host, everyone wants to host. It's just a huge advantage. Um, Especially if you play here at Bram, uh, we have incredible, incredible uh, home court advantage. So that'd be a big deal if we were able to host. But um, so just even looking ahead, that does make you focus even more on the game um, on hand, just because every single game is so important for those bigger goals. So, yeah, that's why even just our game on Saturday, it's huge because uh, like Coach Mitty said, after, you know, we took a tough loss up at Iowa State, which, again, is a really hard place to play. Um, But he's just like, we can't let one turn into two. Like, we just got to stop it right here. Um, Tough game. We didn't play nearly as well as we wanted to, but um, we kind of just have to flip a switch here and then just, you know, take one game at a time and finish it out. Looking forward to that uh, farm again rematch when you get to host them here in just uh, about a week or so. Uh, mm-hmm. Obviously, as you mentioned, the Iowa State loss, part of a, a tough four game stretch, losing three of your last four. All three came on the road against very good competition. As you mentioned, Iowa State's a very difficult place to play on the road at Oklahoma, who is the hottest team in the country, you could argue right now, at Texas, which is always a good program. Like, how obviously. Ayoka Lee was back. We can talk about her in a minute, but it, it it was a touch stress for you guys. I mean, how have you guys kind of handled this last four games and how do you feel like it's impacting the team moving forward? Uh, yeah, I think um, obviously not having Yoki out there was very tough um, considering it, it, this might've been our, our toughest stretch of games that we've had all year. Um, so it kind of came at kind of a bad time, but um, you know, I, you can't choose when you play your games, you know, it's just the luck of the draw, but um, I think we fought really hard. I think we, um, we did a lot of good things on both sides of the ball without her out there. Um, Obviously um, not enough good things. And then, you know, getting her back, 
I mean, she went through like kind of a, a, a tough surgery and, you know, wasn't able to be out there with us. So obviously like there's going to be a little bit of adjustment when she does come back and play. Um, and so we were really happy to get her back uh, this last game. And obviously we needed her out there. I mean, she got that last second bucket to send us into double OT. Um, she's just such a presence on both ends of the floor, offensively, defensively. Um, she had what, like seven blocks in the game. So obviously we, we really, really missed her and we're glad that she's back and she'll just continue to, you know, get back to playing how she was before she got injured. I mean, obviously we've, we've got to talk about her. Uh, Yoki, as you referred to her, uh, the impact we on the court, we understand, we all know like that she is incredible. We're talking big 12 player of the year caliber of performance this year off the court not having her on the court is a big deal, but off the court, how important is she to this team? Oh, she's very important. I mean, she's a, a leader, um, a veteran. She's been here for six years. She knows um, K-State better than anybody, I think. Um, and she's just such a presence, um, like you said, not just on the floor, but off the floor as well. Um, she really knows how to talk to people. Um, she's just a really, really great teammate. Um, so obviously with her not on the floor, she still is impacting the team just as much when she's off, um, on the sidelines. Um, obviously in game, she does a lot communicating. Um, and I personally, I just love having her out there. I think we, we play well together. We understand each other very well. Um, so it, it is tough when she's not able to be out there, but I think she'll be good the rest of the year. All right, what's what's your personal goal for the rest of this season? Obviously, as as a team, you guys have big aspirations with as good as this team is for this year. But personally, mm -hmm. how, what are you what kind of pressure and responsibility are you putting on yourself as part of this team moving forward? Yeah, I think uh obviously I've had to go into a different role than I had last year with Yoki coming back. Um I've tried to just, you know, do what I, whatever I have to do, kind of like be a glue person on both ends of the floor. Um, uh, just have to do my job offensively and do my job defensively. Um, I, I have a, I know what to say uh, on the court. Um, so I just have to make sure that I'm always uh, knowing when to say, um, helping my teammates. I, I see things very well. So just continuing to be a, a really good teammate and, uplifting um, maybe the younger girls because we have such a deep team that we have a lot of girls that are playing that um, haven't really played much college basketball this past game Terrence Sides played a lot of minutes um, and then we have Zy Walker coming off uh, of the bench that's playing really high minutes for a freshman and she's doing amazing so just trying to let some of my knowledge you know give that to them let them absorb that um, and then just Obviously, we want to win a conference championship, whether that be um, during the season or the tournament, um, and then hosting the NCAA tournament and seeing, you know, what kind of run we can make. Okay, we have to talk about your impact off of the court. Specifically, if people have noticed maybe some stuffed baby goats that have been <laughs> around the arena this season, we have you to thank for that. Okay, you got to fill me in on the backstory. Where did the baby goats come from? Okay, so... Basically, the we have three captains on the team, and it's me, Serena, and Yoki. And Coach Mitty had come to us before the season started and just said, um, we basically have this drill that we do in practice, and it's called the, the gap drill. And basically, some people call it a kill, but it's just three stops in a row. So defensively, if you get three stops in a row, that means it's one gap. And so... He wanted us to come up with a way to count and celebrate when we do get a gap in a game. And so he's like, I don't care what it is, but we just need a way, like, have some fun with it. You can do whatever you want, but we need to know, like, how we're going to count the stops and then celebrate the gaps. And also our goal is to have seven gaps in a game. Like, that's the goal. Because there's some statistic, but I want to say it's like, if you get seven gaps in a game, like at the division one level or something, you win 94% of your games or something like that. Okay. So okay. that was our goal. And he gave that to us and we were just like, okay. And I just started thinking and 
um, my favorite animal is a goat. So I, it just kind of came to my head and I was like, GG, gap goat. It, it kind of just flowed. And I was like, okay, what, what about this idea? And uh, they just kind of looked at me like Yoki and Serena were just like, what? Like, okay, like I, I, whatever you want to do. And so I kind of just went off with it and I got with Casey Ardobo and I was like, okay, what if we got a stuffed goat? And whenever we like got three stops in a row, we could hold up the goat. And when we got seven stops or seven gaps in a game, he could get like a chain that has a seven on it. And it just so happened that Amazon just had all these items easily accessible for us. And so we went on Amazon and we found this giant stuff to go. And it was honestly perfect. Uh, he was, he's just so large and he's not flimsy. So he's very firm. If you hold him, he doesn't like flop around like a normal stuffed animal would. Um, and then the chains, like it was just a huge hit and, and everyone really liked it at first, you know, coach Mitty, he kind of thought it was stupid and was just like, <laughs> who came up with that and they're kind of Serena and Vyok are kind of looking at me like it was Gabby and he's like of course but eventually he was even the one that said that it should have an Instagram account he was the one that came up with that and I was like oh so you think it's cool like you you think it's that cool it needs an Instagram account so then had to make it an Instagram and um I wasn't even the one that came up with the baby gap goats. There is a, a fan that comes to all of our games. He sits courtside and he had just come to a game one time and he just had this little tiny white goat with a K-State jersey on it and was like, look, it's baby gap goat. And we were all like, oh my gosh, where did you get that? That's incredible. And so we just thought it was the cutest thing ever. And then people started asking like, like, oh, that'd be cool. Like if I could have my own little gap goat. So then I was like, okay, let me like do some like research in on this. And I found all these different tiny goats on Amazon, the tiny, they're like pet jerseys, like for a, like a small cat, little chains. They're actually just bracelets, but they go like on their neck, like a chain necklace, even seven necklaces to go. And I put them all in my Amazon storefront. And then I just put that out there. I put it on Twitter and Instagram and stuff. So people could use my link and they click on it and it has everything you need to make your own baby gap go. And we have seen a lot of them at the games. I, I have personally signed the jerseys of at least 60 goats. It's been insane. It's so awesome to see people out there with their little goats. I think I look, you created something that at first glance seems silly and has caught on like wildfire for Kansas State fans. Like the fact that everyone's like I people are coming like, wait, wait, what is this? What is this? What is this goat thing? Why is there the the fact that you set up an Amazon store so that people could make uh, a build your own baby gap goat is <laughs> is absolutely fantastic. If you're a Kansas State fan and you want one of your own, you just go follow Gabby. On Twitter, it's at Gabby Gregory 12 And right there at the top is the pen tweet with the link. You can build your own. Uh, my goal is to have one in time for the NCAA tournament so we can have one for the network that just uh, will help cheer you guys on. I, I think that's fantastic. It really is. I do think it's funny that everyone thought you were crazy and it was silly. And now everybody, like fans have all bought in. They're all they're all on board. Yeah. Yeah, it, it was it was pretty – even my teammates, they kind of – because no one really – we didn't really, like, explain it that well. We were kind of – because we had come up with the idea, like, right before our first game. So we were kind of just, like, last minute ordering all this stuff. We're like, oh, my gosh, I don't know if it's even going to be here in time. So we kind of didn't even, like, explain it that well to anybody. And so our teammates were still just like, like, what is – I don't understand what's going on. Like, what is this go? Like, and they're just kind of looking around like, this is so weird. Like, this is so weird. But now everyone loves it and – we're like really upset when we don't get seven gaps in a game because he doesn't get his chains and then we don't get to like celebrate with him in the locker room after the game. Cause when he gets his chain, then that's when we're in the locker room and we take pictures with him and we post them on Instagram and stuff and we get to celebrate him. But if he doesn't get his chains then we don't get to celebrate with him and we're pretty sad. <laughs>
All right. There's there's one more Twitter interaction we have to talk about uh, <laughs> that came on Valentine's Day. Uh, I, I think most Big 12 fans and most listeners of this show are aware of the uh, – Let's call him the Big 12 Twitter personality. I think personality is a, is a fair way of describing it. Cyclone Larry. A troll seems a little bit too far. Personality seems that. You, you tweeted out on Valentine's Day, quote, Happy Valentine's Day, Cyclone Larry. Will you be in attendance to my game tonight? He did reply, quote, you know I wouldn't miss it for the world. I have to understand. Gabby, why are you uh, tweeting at the Iowa State's and the Big 12's most infamous uh, Twitter personality? I honestly, I had followed Cyclone Larry on Twitter like last year sometime and he just happened to follow me back. And I follow a lot of the, the, uh, K-State burner accounts. That's what I call them. <laughs> and, you know, I just, I like looking at their tweets. Um, so I follow a lot of them and I had seen Cyclone Larry and I followed him and he followed me back. And so we had been following each other for a while now and, I just thought it'd be hilarious if I tweeted at him and it, and it just happened to be Valentine's day. So it just made it even more funny. Um, so when I did tweet at him, I didn't expect it was gonna just blow up the way it did. Um, and it absolutely did. Um, and, and it was pretty hilarious. And he still has, has tweeted at me during the game, after the game, the, probably the funniest part of the whole thing was, we're playing at Iowa State, and it's in the second half, and I get fouled, and I go to the free throw line, and I'm shooting my free throws, and the student section is chanting, Cyclone Larry, <laughs> Cyclone Larry, <laughs> and I'm just like, this is not real. This is not real, and if somebody's not, like, as chronically online as I am, like, they would have, like, if I had to sit here and try to explain to my dad, like, what that means, he'd be like, I don't get it. <laughs> But like either you get it or you don't get it. And I just saw it as an opportunity. I was like, this would be hilarious. And it, it was. So getting the Iowa State fans to chant Cyclone Larry at you at the free throw line. I mean, between that and and Gap Goat, Gabby, <laughs> I don't, I'm not sure you could find a better, better like season for you than the way this team is going, creating the Gap Goat, <laughs> being Cyclone Larry's Valentine. Like this has been a right. it seems like it's a pretty big good season for you. Yeah, seriously. Uh, I couldn't ask for much more, honestly, considering those two things. <laughs> <laughs> well, Gabby, we, we really appreciate your time today. This has been a lot of fun, and thank you for sharing with us uh, the story of the Gap Goat. Um, do me a favor. Obviously, if people want to watch you play, ESPN, ESPN Plus, everywhere, Kansas State women's basketball is playing. There's uh, You've got five games left on the schedule, plenty of big games coming up. Uh, but if people just want to see what you do on social media, because obviously you are very, uh, as you said, chronically online, uh, where yeah. can they follow you? Uh, so all my social media accounts are at Gabby Gregory 12. So that's Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, all of them, Gabby Gregory 12. All right, well, now I have to ask, where, where are you most active? Most active, I don't, okay, so what I'm on the most is probably Twitter. Like, I'm always on Twitter. I don't really post on Twitter that much, but I'm I'm lurking on Twitter a lot. Um, and then actually posting Instagram, I'm always posting on my story and stuff. I have been slacking on my TikTok game, um, haven't, haven't been on there. I just always forget about it. And I, for some reason, have like a lot of followers on there and I just, I just never use it, but I need to get back on the grind. Seriously. There we go. All right. Gabby, appreciate your time. Uh, good luck against UCF this weekend. Thank you so much.